right? And that's where you'll see a child do these kind of moves because now I'm here and I literally have to lift my tush up. When I'm looking for the structure of the hips, first of all, and the eyes, the one thing that they look at when they do a hip x-ray is just where the hips are in, in relationship to the socket. Very rarely do, do they talk about the relationship of the hip. Very rarely do they talk about incomplete ischiums, which I have a whole bunch of. More common with cerebral palsy, the ischium should grow in by age seven. But again, some of them are really incomplete. And when a child goes to sit down, you've got these bones sticking into you. I can't stress enough, like Graham needed more than a second opinion. We've been to 26 doctors before we found out what his condition was. Sometimes you just don't have the doctors to go to um, in your area. I understand the frustrations, but please understand when, when I'm asking for what you need, it's really in your best interest. Now, that being said, going into the pelvis, a lot of kiddos with CP, when you're dealing with the hips that go straight. Now I have what's called femoral torsion, right? So like Jerome, Jerome I have more like his legs. So if you actually look at my legs and I'm going to slide my leg up, look at where my knee is, where my, my foot is, and this will continue, right? If I slide my leg up, the left is not as bad, but I'm not aligned properly. What this is, is my, my hips, instead of coming here, are torqued back. It's called femoral torsion, right? So it's 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 there. Now, if you if you want to actually see where the heck my knee is, now you can really see where the heck my knee is. So I crawled because I had bars on my feet, right? I crawled until I was 21 months. So in crawling position with denison bars, so it's the white boots with the bars across in denison position. Then my knees are straight, right? This is how. They messed up my legs. When I have uh, to come around and so forth again, for me to come here, my knee hasn't crossed midline yet. And look at where my foot's at. So what that means is, again, if you look at me this way, I crawled until 21 months. So you can see where my feet are at. Now here my legs are straight. So in a sense, I'm built to stand on my knees, not on my feet. And you can see again, I'll over exaggerate, but if I were to do a squat, this is where I'm at. This is how crooked my leg is. Now, I'm cognitively aware of this and I work around it, but in one of my trainings, I was finally able to do crisscross applesauce. You have no idea how, because I used to have to sit like this for crisscross and I had a very rounded back. And again, this is where my pubic bone strike was able to come out, still not in its entirety. So when you are working with someone that has this deviation in structure, whether it's with me or with your child, you're going to want to take that into consideration. So I'm going to be showing you examples of what's called Cox of Valga and femoral tor torsion. So Jerome is more like me where she's concerned about the leg bending. Well, that's what's happening. The femoral torsion, now that he's walking, is really starting to show up. And it's great that he's walking. When you have cox of alga, though, and the legs have really gone straight, the a child can't sit up because, excuse me, I'm on my mic, so I hope I'm not yelling in at a certain point. Normally, again, you have the trochanter, which is bent, and that's where I can, I have that space for my leg. So, You'll see a child here and an army and almost looks like the legs are, are dragging and quote can't get up into all fours because they can't get up into all fours. Even for me to get up in all fours, you see where my leverage point is. So I really have to go back to um, the origin of that versus crawling into all fours. You shouldn't see a child lifting themselves up nor an 80 year old where they're you know what I mean? So because again, if I have Cox of Alga, I'm actually have to going to come all the way here, right? And then somehow get up. Now, if I ask all of you to do this, right? And that's where you'll see a child do these kind of moves because now I'm here and I literally have to lift my tush up. And this is why, again, grown adults can't get off the floor when they're 80 or whatever, they, the whole commercial, I've fallen and I can't get up. 
It's the same thing because their pelvis doesn't work the way it should have. They've lost their flexibility. So yes, a child with severe coccyx valga and subluxation is structurally really not going to be able to crawl unless they're put into the position of crawling. Any child that has neuromuscular conditions, muscle structure deviations from genetics to trauma, please, the two baselines you need is your ophthalmologist, at least by age one, if not sooner, because you need that baseline and you need to see the reports and understand them. And then also you really, again, x-rays to be taken not so lightly because it is an x-ray and it has to be done with your doctor, but having a baseline uh, at a year, not a horrible idea either. And again, but that's up to you and your doctor. Most doctors just say, ah, what do you expect with kids with CP? But if we wanted to go into certain milestones Right? You can't keep expecting a child to crawl when crawling is just not their structure. It's really clever how a parent just wants to see the finished results right? versus how movement or those transitional skills are meant to happen. But transitional skills impairment is not always cognitive. It, it's much more structure than you think and that's what we're going to be going on here.